Hey y'all, before we get into the video, I just want to say really quick, I am going to be creating a new series of videos depending on how many submissions I actually get for it, but in the comments down below if you would actually input some of your own takes. I actually want to know what are some of the odd exotic combos that don't exactly match together that you love to run? Like how I know a lot of people would use like Sweet Business with Actium Warrig because that is kind of meant to go together. I'm thinking the, what is the stasis, what is the salvation's grip that you use on your Phoenix Protocol setup? Things that don't co really work together, but for some reason you just love to use because it is just such a unique combo, whether it's two exotics you love, even if they mismatch, you know, just stuff like that. Go ahead and comment that down below if you actually have submissions for it. Hello everyone, and off the heels of Into the Light number three, we have of course another reset update. So, of course, as you can tell, looking from the man in front of me, Lord Saladin has returned, which means that Iron Banner has also returned. Along with it, there's actually a boost to Valor. Now, that of course means that there is double ranks for basic Crucible, however, it does not touch upon Iron Banner. Which the mode is currently Tribute, which is basically the collect things from enemies, deposit them into a thing. Think of Supremacy, except you have to put them in an additional place. Then, as well, this is also Iron Banner that is the first time that we have access to a few new weapons. They don't initially show up here, but you have access to the reprised version of Multimach, which was one of the last things that actually had scope options no longer. It doesn't have scopes anymore, but a lightweight 900 round per minute SMG. A kind of... I should say crutch? I, I don't know if crutch is the right word, right word, but it was a meta among some machine guns and close range encounters for a long time because of how excessively ranged it was. And a new one, the Tusk of the Boar, a strand wave frame single shot grenade launcher. So, the, the, weird saying that out loud, strand wave frame. Now, it's of course to a T to see how it'll turn out. Of course, it might be crap. It might not even have a place for any other sandbox, but you know, like I said, more on that later. However, getting in through the rest of the world, like I mentioned, uh, yeah, new week um, into the light is next week, and as well, of course, I do talk about a lot of the dates and require um, or intended with it in the own respective videos. Now, the weapon for this week is the Azume RR4, which means you can get the basic version as well as the adept version if you run the Grandmaster. In this week's Grandmaster Nightfall is currently in the Cosmodrome for the legendary Psyops Battleground. Now, this is definitely one of the harder ones. So if you are looking to farm it out, I would say wait for another week of almost any other thing. This was the last Nightfall I did to get my Conqueror uh, Gilded to 11 this, this season. So I definitely would recommend if you want to farm, do anything else if you're going solely, solely for the complete or just to get that one drop of Azume just to make sure you have it. Sure, I would probably go with it otherwise. Nothing new in Gambit per the usual, and like I mentioned with Crucible, Iron Banner is active, which means no trials this weekend, but for our random different modes, 6v6 Quick Play is Clash, and Rumble as usual, Collision for the 3v3 Labs as always, and Elimination for 3v3 Quick Play. Now, in terms of everything else, of course, now, give me feedback on what, if you wouldn't mind actually telling what other parts of the reset would you just prefer not to see, just because it's not exactly relevant. I know this is a broad reset update, but I do cover most of what's important, not exactly other things, um, although I might go forward and just including, um, in terms of the map rotation, things that are relevant. Like, one of the things I know I talk about a lot is when, um, Garden of Salvation's, uh, raids are challenge modes. Now, they aren't exactly required just because until it is a farming week, even still, it is not exactly relevant because there is no red borders there. But there is no red borders in at least one or two other dungeons. Now... Starting off with Neo Muna, um, I'm gonna just kick it off. Partition is the hard reset, the Sparrow version that is dealing with the Cabal Bomber, with the Vex Incursion Zone in Liming Harbor, with the weekly rotation mode being Breakneck, which is the mission where you go and kill all those Vex that a lot of people farm out for uh, lots of reasons. Then for the weekly raid, it is actually Vow of the Disciple, which is, of course, access to all four challenge modes in Normal and Master Mode, the master mode having strength focused armor and of course access to limited time triumphs if you complete it overcharged fusion rifle a little icy hot for the surges and you know the usual champions and shields and everything else 
for Master Mode. Now, I do warn, as usual, when it comes to those ones, Master Mode is only available for this week. So if you need to get something done specifically there, go ahead and do it while you can. Then into, uh, let's see, I think the EDZ for... No, that's still there. <laughs> um, crap, I am looking for something that I am not thinking of. Ah! The weekly dungeon is Prophecy, which means it is infinitely farmable, even more so. Which is actually pretty damn nifty, just because, of course, of the loot refresh, lots of nifty gear that you can get from there, including a god roll auto rifle, if I recall, that is a PvP monster. But aside from that, the legendary uh, exotic mission is, of course, Seraph Shield, which means that anything Ikelos... Um, Rasputin or Revision Zero is available from the reward pool as well as normal and legend mode in case you want to run it out. Now for Crota, the current um, challenge mode is the first counter challenge, which of course is basically the one where you have to only trigger one lamp per deposit, if I recall, which is a bit of a bastard. And of course, master mode is resilience focused, icy hot for surges, as well as overcharged shotgun. Now, uh, like I said, I'm going to see about downsizing a little bit, so I'll cover a few of the more important one because of craftable weapons and the like. But darting throughout the world, in terms of challenge mode for King's Fall, we have the grass is always greener in case you want to farm out an extra drop there for red borders. For the Root of Nightmares raid, there is currently the Crossfire Challenge, okay, second encounter challenge. A little a bit of a weird one, but not too terrible to pull off. Then for uh, Europa for the Deepstone Crypt, we currently have the Red Rover Challenge. Not gonna lie, in terms of farming, I would just rather do this all the entire raid as opposed to this challenge. Then, do, 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 just making sure I cover all my bases. Lastly, for the Last Wish Raid, it is the summoning ritual for that, which I think is first encounter challenge. Yes, it is actually first encounter challenge. Basically, you have to use every plate, even the ones that aren't in. in or aren't for the encounter then uh another one that i am thinking about cutting off from the list of course then there is legend mode dares of attorney which is high vex and valista arc again don't know how many people actually genuinely need that so i'm cutting it loose just in case now there is of course the um the coil, which I think I might cut that loose just because no one else is really playing it or really needs it anymore. But I digress. So moving on into the Eververse store for our weekly stock. Basically, there is still the flashback of Season of Dawn. I know this dropped just last week. I expect it to at least be around for at least one more week. I don't know how long to expect it for. I don't know if Bungie ever stated exactly how long it'll be here and while i am talking about it as well the bright dust currency is still there for a gift to be sure to claim it weekly if you want it for sure because it's free why not then on the front page of course we have a few shaders raven silk which isn't at all silky or raven if i recall this is basically the armor set that looked piratey without looking too gross and another fan favorite, as well as personal favorite, Carbon Blood. If you ever wanted to just be a straight up New Age Black Armory without the wavy weirdness or less metallics. Then we also have the Pyramid Entrance, which is a transmat hearkening back to season 15. Lots of dark woo woo There's no good way to say it. And the Ozymandias ornament for Last Man Standing, which... Yes, Last Man Standing. This is still available from... This shotgun is still available from Season of the Deep which is a pretty solid aggressive frame shotgun. Don't know if it's meta, of course, isn't craftable, which is kind of a good way to say whether meta or not. But you know, if you want a nice Gambit Prime look for it. And we also have an emote, the read the map emote from Season of the Plunder, which of course relevant because that was the pirate and dig up treasure uh, season, which I, let's see, and yep, you just toss it away when you're finished reading it as usual. Then into the flares for some stuff, we have Chrome Stock, which is a pretty clean looking gambit shader of all of them. Basically a nice, clean, uh, polished metal with a little bit of bronze metal and blues. Pretty clean look, not gonna lie. And we also have Titan Slate, one I've talked about many a time, because while its armor doesn't look exactly great, the weapons do a little bit better. A black and white or black and silver clean look with a few red glowing uh, glows when they are. Then we also have Gloam Strife from Season of the Arrivals, which is, not gonna lie, one of those weird ones that kind of makes it look wooden and doesn't exactly match in any way. While the armor doesn't look half bad, it doesn't exactly match a theme. 
Then we also have Erebos Glance, which before the return of the Super Black was the closest thing we got to Super Black, with the exception of a few orange details and an orange glow. Pretty solid look for, you know, any solar burnt uh, looking people. Then you also have for the next trans mats, the Fallen Arrival, which is you popping out of an Ether Servitor. The Ghost Purple, which is eh, not worth it. And we also have the Crystalline Breakout, harkening back to uh, Nezarek's breakout from his uh, Pyramid Coffin. Now, we also have the Roller Coaster uh, Multiplayer Emote, which is new to this season, which seems to not actually have the Roller Coaster itself. It just has... Ah, there it goes. But just has your Guardians kind of enjoying the roller coaster and awkwardly ending and once again we have have the future facing grease which like i mentioned in the last video these are a part of the armor set way back into season of the dawn which is this one if every um class has their own version i'm not sure if they are also in contendum with Season of the Dawn, or if they're just a different armor set, but this is in part only available for a short time. If you want to get it incomplete, I'd recommend picking it up as soon as possible. Then next we have the Nemean Shell from Season 15, which is basically a Nemean Lion reference, which was part of the Eververse stock of that season. And we also have the Sh Shining Cabriolet, which is another um, play on just basic sports cars, Corvette. Look for your jump ship, which looks a little weird in space now that I look at it. And we also have the Out of Dodge Vehicle, uh, or Sparrow, which I recall seeing this a few times nowadays, which I don't think, um... It's supposed to be in reference to anything exactly. It just looks like a good old camping sparrow. And we also have the desert camo ornament for Mida Multitool. This is quite an old ornament, not gonna lie. It's all the way back into season five. But, you know, it's a pretty solid look for Mida eh, for the crowd that still uses Mida, which is literally only people in the Crucible. And lastly, as always, we have the If It Fits projection, which is one of the few projections I would say get just because it is a cute little cat If I Fits, I Sits reference. Over to Banshee, he's got a lot of repeats as I mentioned before. Luna Lotta 4B, a nifty little stasis lightweight bow. It is better than expected, but also not good enough to really replace any other stasis bows in your setup. Cartesian Coordinate, which has one of the parts that make this one of the best fusion rifles in the game for damage. It is one of the few things that I guess has access to Vorpal Weapon in a rapid fire frame. Which, while old and a bit of a dinosaur in today's standards, it is still probably one of the better, you know, fusion rifles just purely for damage. And we also have Vulpecula, uh, not so much of a dinosaur, but almost equally as old. It is, of course, the pre, uh, one of the early, or how should I say this? One of the earliest stasis guns that wasn't a heavy, but it is also one of the last of its kind, not having access to any sort of origin trait. Speaking of origin trait, we have Augma PR6, which is one of the most basic weapons around. Sure, it can do anything, but not exactly in a fantastic fashion, but, you know, it's still there. Same with Palmyra. It is craftable, it has an origin trait, it is along the line of a good option for a while, but it's hard to say if it is still the good option, or if it really stacks up to any other versions of its kind that is, you know, just found in the wild. And lastly, visiting 801 for her shaders, we have Geno Titan All Zero, one that I talked about a few times. Another sort of community favorite for a simple darker carbon fiber with shiny metallic orange look back from Escalation Protocol on Mars in the old days. And Mercury Prophetic, which is back from uh, the season of Osiris, I forget what it's officially called. But a little bit of Vex style burnt brown and copper. And also the War Cult Scheme, which is, you know... Honestly, it would have been one of the cooler shaders if it just didn't have that awkward mustard yellow in random parts to it. But, you know, a faction shader nonetheless. And with that, that is the end of the video. I would like to actually thank everyone who has been watching recently. The support on my last Twit video has been deeply appreciated. It was surprising how much it actually, you know, got off the ground considering it was just another one of my Twit coverages. But with that, my name is Matt Scorpion. I will see you in the next video.